No New Yorker wants to see people on the streets. No one wants to see people hurt. Pony in steps that we were going to have to take that would get in the way of the cleanliness and the safety of our city. That the right to shelter was never intended to apply to large-scale migrant populations. It protects people from being harmed by the elements. It protects people from dying on the streets of New York. Over the last two years, our city has been managing an ongoing humanitarian crisis. The city will be moving forward to lift the right to shelter mandates in some sort of capacity. Over 180,000 seek asylum. New York City, the Big Apple, the city that never sleeps. It's bustling, it's vibrant, and it's also the destination for over 180,000 migrants seeking asylum. 180,000. That's like packing the population of a small city into the already crowded streets of NYC. So why are these folks flocking to the concrete jungle? Well, for many, it's a desperate bid for safety and security. They're leaving behind everything they know, their homes, their families, their communities, all in search of a better life. And where better to find refuge than in the land of opportunity, right? But here's the kicker. Once they get to the city that never sleeps, they find themselves without a place to lay their heads. That's where the shelters come in. See, with the housing market as tight as a pair of skinny jeans on a hot day, many migrants have no choice but to turn the city's shelters for a roof over their head. Now, imagine 180,000 people knocking on the door of already overcrowded shelters. It's like trying to fit a herd of elephants into a clown car. It just isn't going to work. The city will be moving forward to lift the right to shelter mandates in some sort of capacity. More than 175,000 migrants have traveled hundreds of miles from the U.S. southern border to here, New York City. No New Yorker wants to see people on the streets. No one wants to see people hurt. Find the city's right to shelter law, allowing the city to limit the amount of time some asylum seekers can stay in shelter. The city's shelter system is stretched to the max, with resources spread thinner than a New York slice of pizza. Beds are scarce, facilities are overwhelmed, and tensions are running high. But it's not just about the numbers, it's about the people behind them. These migrants aren't just statistics, they're individuals with stories, dreams, and aspirations. They've traveled miles, faced hardships, and now they're here hoping for a better shot at a better life. So, the influx of migrants seeking asylum in NYC is no joke. It's a real-life drama unfolding on the streets of the city, testing its limits, and challenging its ability to provide for those in need. But if there's one thing New Yorkers know how to do, it's roll with the punches. So here's to hoping that the city can rise to the occasion, hold arms a little, and welcome these newcomers with the warmth and hospitality it's famous for. Right to Shelter Law New York City is making moves. The city's dealing with a serious housing crunch, with shelters bursting at the seams and migrants in need of a place to crash. But fear not, because NYC's got a plan, and it involves shaking things up with a little thing called a settlement. So what's this settlement all about? Well, it's like a fancy legal agreement between the city and, well, whoever is involved in this shelter shindig. Basically, it's a way for NYC to tweak its right to shelter law, giving itself some wiggle room when it comes to how long migrant adults can crash in those overcrowded shelters. This settlement is like a breath of fresh air for the city's shelter system. With more flexibility on the table, NYC can finally start to ease the burden on those overworked shelters and make some room for all those incoming migrants. It's like rearranging the furniture to fit in that extra guest at Thanksgiving dinner. Sure, it takes some juggling, but in the end, everyone's got a seat at the table. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. This settlement isn't just about making space in the shelters. It's also about showing a little compassion and understanding for those folks who found themselves in the city's time of need. Because, let's face it, seeking asylum isn't a walk in the park. It's a journey fraught with uncertainty and fear. And if NYC can offer a helping hand along the way, well, that's a win-win for everyone involved. So there you have it. NYC is settling in for some changes, and it's all in the name of making room for those who need it most. The right to shelter protects people their lives, their livelihoods, their well-being. And the city government, which is obligated to provide them shelter, is facing serious challenges. Friday, imposing a new rule that any migrants arriving can only stay in a city shelter for 30 days. Over the last two years, our city has been managing an ongoing humanitarian crisis. 
It's a small step, but sometimes it's the little things that make the biggest difference. So here's to a brighter, more welcoming future for all those migrants looking for a place to call home in the city that never sleeps. 30-Day Limit on Stay All right, let's talk temporary measures, specifically the 30-day limit on shelter stays for migrant adults in NYC. Now, you might be thinking, 30 days? That's like a New York minute. And you're not wrong. It's a quick turnaround, no doubt about it, but let's break it down. Under this settlement, migrant adults get a max of 30 days in the city shelters. No ifs, ands, or buts. Once those 30 days are up, it's time to hit the road. No reapplying, no extensions. It's like a strict checkout time at a hotel. Once it's up, you gotta go. Now, on the surface, this might seem like a straightforward solution to the overcrowding problem. After all, shorter stays mean more turnover, right? Now to New York City's migrant crisis. A hearing was held this afternoon regarding the city's right to shelter laws. These modifications are only temporary and will last only until the current humanitarian crisis ends. We all want for the three levels of government to work together to solve this problem. Pony in steps that we were going to have to take that will get in the way of the cleanliness and the safety of our city. But hold your horses because there's a catch. Actually, there are several. For starters, 30 days is barely enough time to figure out which way is uptown and which way is downtown in this crazy city, let alone stabilize your entire life. I mean, imagine trying to find a job, secure housing, and navigate the maze of bureaucracy in just a month. It's enough to make your head spin. And let's not forget about those folks with complex needs, the ones who might need a little extra time and support to get back on their feet. For them, a 30-day limit is like trying to fit a square peg into a round hole. It just doesn't work. And don't even get me started on the critics, those naysayers who are quick to point out the flaws in this whole setup. They're ringing the alarm bells, warning that this short duration could leave vulnerable individuals high and dry with nowhere to turn. So while the 30-day limit might sound like a quick fix, it's not without its challenges. But here's hoping that NYC can find a way to strike a balance between addressing the emergency situation and providing the support that migrants truly need. After all, in a city as resilient as this one, anything's possible. Impact on Migrants and City The challenges and criticisms are swirling around this settlement and its impact on both migrants and the city itself. Buckle up, because it's about to get real. First off, let's talk about those critics. You know, the folks who aren't afraid to speak their minds. They're raising some valid points. See, they're arguing that this settlement is like slapping a band-aid on a broken bone. Sure, it might cover up the problem for a little while, but it's not going to fix what's really going on underneath. And what's really going on? Well, for starters, there's a humanitarian crisis brewing right under our noses. With migrants being shown the door after just 30 days, many of them are left with nowhere else to turn. I'm talking about folks who've already been through the ringer, fleeing violence, persecution, you name it, only to end up on the streets of NYC with no roof over their heads. And let's not forget about the ripple effect this settlement could have on the city itself. When migrants are forced out of shelters, they're not just disappearing into thin air, they're finding other places to lay their heads. And more often than not, those places are less than ideal. We're talking about illegal living arrangements, cramped quarters, you name it. But it's not just about the migrants. It's also about the city's ability to handle the fallout. With shelters already stretched to the max, there are serious concerns about whether NYC can effectively manage the influx of migrants and ensure the well-being of all its residents. The right to shelter mandate requires that the city provide a bed to anyone who needs it, whether or not that applies to migrants. That the right to shelter was never intended to apply to large-scale migrant populations. Tens of thousands of migrants arriving from Central and South America and West Africa, straining city resources. It protects people from being harmed by the elements. It protects people from dying on the streets of New York. It's like trying to juggle flaming torches while riding a unicycle. Sure, it might look impressive, but sooner or later, something's going to go up in flames. So there's no denying it. This settlement is facing some serious pushback. But maybe it's just what the city needs to wake up and smell the coffee. Because when it comes to addressing the needs of migrants and ensuring the well-being of all its residents, NYC can't afford to drop the ball. So here's hoping that they can find a way to navigate these choppy waters 
and come out on top. Implications and Legal Considerations Let's talk about the elephant in the room, the uncertainty surrounding this settlement and what it means for the future of NYC. Because when it comes to legal agreements and temporary fixes, there's always more questions than answers. First off, let's address the elephant in the room. The temporary nature of this settlement. Sure, it might provide some relief in the short term, but what about the long haul? That's the million dollar question. With no clear end date in sight, there's a whole lot of uncertainty hanging over this settlement like a dark cloud. Will it be enough to address the city's shelter crisis? Will it lead to lasting change? Only time will tell. But it's not just about the duration, it's also about the fine print. And let me tell you, there's plenty of it. This settlement comes with all sorts of legal exceptions for extenuating circumstances. Things like lease agreements, job searches, and medical conditions. Sounds good in theory, right? Well, not so fast. These exceptions introduce a whole new set of complexities into the mix, making shelter management feel more like a game of 3D chess than a straightforward task. And let's not forget about the bigger picture here, the broader issues that this settlement brings to light. We're talking about immigration policy, homelessness, and the role of cities in providing support to vulnerable populations. It's like pulling on a loose thread. Once you start tugging, you realize there's a whole lot more going on beneath the surface. So there's a whole lot of uncertainty swirling around this settlement, from its long-term effectiveness to its legal implications to the broader issues it brings to light. But maybe that's not such a bad thing. Maybe it's just what NYC needs to spark a larger conversation about how to address the root causes of homelessness and support those in need. After all, when it comes to tackling tough issues, a little uncertainty might just be the first step towards finding real solutions. That's all for this video, folks. See you next time.